This is for the broader non-tax commercial arrangements. The AAT found that the expert evidence of Mr Phillips was uninformative and attended with serious deficiencies, noting the generality of his evidence equally applied to employees and to, as to independent contractors. The AAT found that in relation to Mr Douglas's professed understanding of the PSI provisions, quote, he could only have come to such a subjective re review as a result of grossly careless and self-interested misunderstanding of the legislative provisions. On the imposition of penalties, the AAT stated, Mr Douglas's conduct at least merits characterisation as gross carelessness and satisfies the criterion of relevant recklessness. On the remission of penalties, the AAT said, in light of the findings I've made above, Mr Douglas's conduct amply justifies characterisation as involving recklessness. There is no occasion to remit penalties to any extent the, of, the, of the penalty assessments. In weighing the evidence of Mr Phillips given at the committee at previous hearings, I'd suggest that this committee needs to consider what notice it should take of the findings of the AAT in the Douglas case with respect to the evidence given by Mr Phillips in that case. In particular, the AAT made the following observation. Mr Phillips is the executive secretary of and essentially the driving force behind Self-Employed Australia. It is an incorporated association that operates as an advocacy group for the rights of self-employed Australians. He provided what he described as an expert witness statement in which he set out to assess the application of custom or practice, particularly in relation to the utilisation of information technology services in the mining and resources sector as it relates to the achievement of result under the PSI income tax laws. This ambitious task Mr Phillips embarked upon despite one, having no legal accounting or information technology qualifications, two, his advocacy role with self-employed Australia, Three, that organisation having entered into a specific agreement with the taxpayer, apparently providing for remuneration contingent on these proceedings, resulting in a favourable outcome for Mr Douglas. And four, making no specific reference in his evidence to any of the relevant IIT income tax provisions of any relevant taxation rulings, nor any of the decisions to which the, the member referred to earlier in his reasons. I'd also draw your attention to paragraphs 91 and 77.